It's day 64. We're going to look at a concept in computer science today called object oriented programming or OOP. O O P. OOP just sounds a bit weird. So, what is object oriented programming? Well, some programming languages force you to use this from day one. I'm looking at you, Java. I'm looking at you with your overly verbose code. If you've come to us for 100 days from Java, you might be nodding your head. But if at 100 days this is your first time learning to program, you'll be scratching your head about this. Object-oriented programming is an idea and a concept where we create a template for how something is going to work, which will allow us to store data about the object and the code that make the object work together in a single file. And you might think, what's the point of this? But what it allows us to do is create a template for something like an enemy in a video game and then tell the game, OK, now I want 20 of those enemies, please. And it'll spawn 20 of them. And if we code it right, we can put them in random places and they would just walk around and get on with their business. Object oriented programming is very powerful when you're doing large scale projects. We're probably not going to do a massive amount of that over the next couple of lessons, but it is really key to the next couple of lessons on user interface design. So let's have a look at how it works. So the main idea in object oriented programming is to create a class. And in Python, that's as easy as typing class. We need to give it a name. Let's start by creating animals. Now, once we're indented, anything we put in here is stored within that class. Remember, this is just a template. So anything we write here isn't actually going to be run until we say, take that template and make it into a real thing, which is called instantiation. And we've done that before. It's just a big word that means create a new version of it. So what sort of things are we going to store within our animal class? Well, I'm probably going to store something like the species. I'm going to start with it equal to none. I want to set that. I may want to give it a name. Again, I'm going to set that to none initially, so we haven't got anything in there. I might then want to go back a few dozen lessons and add the sound it makes. And again, I'm going to start with none initially. So it's a blank class with none of this stuff in it. Now, one of the most important things about a class is we need to tell it what it's going to do when we create one, when we instantiate or when we initialize it. And that's a very strange way of doing things. We're going to create a definition, but we're going to do underscore underscore in it, underscore, underscore. Now, this isn't me doing a Cockney accent in it. What this is, is short for initialization. When I create a new class, this definition is what's going to be run first. So what I might do is I might give it some arguments. Now we're going to go self, first of all, because self is an implicit declaration that says me as an object. And then I'm going to have the name of the animal, the species, and the sound it makes as the arguments to create a new animal. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to tell it that its new name is the name that comes from this definition. The species, and self dot just means me as an object, is going to be the species I set it as, and the sound is going to be the sound I set it as. Now, if we run this at the moment, nothing's going to happen. It's going to go, Cool, you've given me a template, you've given me a plan for what an animal looks like. Well, let's use that. What we need to do is instantiate this animal. Let's start by making one called dog. Now our dog is going to be an animal. And remember the arguments are going to be itself, which we don't need to tell it. Itself is just something that appears. We need to tell it the name, the species and the sound. So a dog is going to be um, a dog. Species is going to be a canine, and the sound the dog makes is woof. If I run this now, again, it doesn't look like anything has happened. But if I print out the dog, what do we get? We get an instance of an object. If I print out at dog.name, I'm going to get the dog's name. If I print out dog.sound, I'm going to get the sound it makes. Now, I can then create a different animal very easily in the same way. And if I print cow.sound, I'll print out the sound 
the cow makes. Now this is really nice now because I've got two objects, a dog and a cow, and they've got their own properties. And that means I can get them to do things and communicate between each other. If I create another definition and I bring in self, which is just its own properties, I can do print out, I'm going to use an F string, self.name says self.sound. So now instead of having to print dog.sound, I can print dog.talk and cow.talk. In fact, I don't even need to print them, I can call them as commands. And there we go. We are, st we are storing all the code for how to make an animal say something within the animal. We're storing all the code for how to store the information about it within the animal. So object orientation and creating classes is all about creating a template for how something should work and then getting it to spin out from there. One cool thing that you get from this idea of object orientation is the idea of inheritance. That means I can take the template from animal as my starting point and I can build on it. What I get is I get everything that's in animal for free. So I'm going to get my species, my name, my sound. I'm going to get my initiation method. I'm going to get my talking method. All that comes in and I can just add stuff onto it. So this works really well if I want to create something like a specific class of animal. So if I create a class called a bird and I feed it an animal, then what I can do is I've already got species name and sound. So I could set those by default to something that I wouldn't need to create. So when I do my def underscore underscore in it, I wouldn't need to take anything for a bird because what I could do is I could set self dot name equals bird self dot species equals avian self dot sound equals tweet and what I've done there is I've created a new type of class that's a bird that will automatically set all those options for me so I can even call my bird by a name I can call it Polly and I can create a bird there with nothing in it and I'll run that nothing much has changed but now I can do and I can do Polly dot talk to talk to Polly and Polly will say bird says tweet so I'm getting that subroutine, which again, I haven't written this one within Bird. I get that for free. And this allows me to extend things massively because if a Bird has a special thing, like Bird has an extra bit of data about it, like maybe Bird has a specific color to it, I can add that in the init. And if Polly is a green bird, then Polly is now set to be a green bird. And I can check that by printing out Polly.color. So the beauty of this is I can take a generic class of things and I can extend upon it. Now, what this is famously used for is video games where we create a class of a character. And that has all the generic things like what does it look like? How does it move? Uh, what are the sound effects for it? All that sort of stuff. And then we inherit those to enemy characters and player characters. And of course, a player character has different and extra things like how is it controlled? Um, where does the score go? How many lives does it have? Whereas the enemy doesn't have any of that information because it walks on a predetermined path. If nothing else, this is a great way to store lots of information in interesting ways without having to redefine the wheel each time you want to add some more information. The templating structure then gives you a lot of power over how it works. Common problems then. Well, one of the most common problems is to think that inheritance works the wrong way. For instance, we know that we have bird.color, okay? So what happens if I try to do cow.color, or at least print it out, because it's not a method, it's a piece of data. Well, if I try to do that, it is gonna crash, because I have said that an animal, which is what a cow is, an animal only has these pieces of data and these subroutines. A bird has that extra piece of data. So unfortunately, Inheritance works from the original class outwards, not the other way. So if you wanted to have color available to animals, you'd have to add, add that into the original template. Another problem is this. The code should work, work right, but unfortunately, what's happening now, this error message is basically saying, look, 
You've said that you're expecting three things, but I've received four. And you might be thinking, well, that's a bit weird because I haven't, I've given it, when I, when I created the animal, I created dog, canine, and wolf. And I've got three things here, name, species, and sound. Well, one of the things that happens with classes is that it gives it a copy of itself. It gives it a link to change the data itself. It's basically a link to where it's stored in memory. So unless you start it off all the time with that link to itself, it's an invisible property. It's one you never need to pass it, but without that, it does break. So you always need to remember that any subroutine needs to have self as the first argument. As usual, I've broken some code. So jump on and have a look to see if you can fix that for me. Your challenge today is to create classes to represent jobs. You're going to create a generic class called job that is going to store the name of the job, the salary and the hours worked. When it initiates itself in the init code, it's going to take the arguments for the name of job, the salary and the hours worked. And it's going to store that in itself. It's going to have another method within it to print out the contents nicely. We're also going to inherit from that the two other kinds of jobs. We're going to have doctor and teacher. Doctor should include everything that's included in normal job, but include speciality and years experience. And teacher should include subject and position. Both the print functions should be changed so that it prints out the extra data within these classes. All I want you to do with this is instantiate three jobs. One is going to be a lawyer. Two is going to be a computer science teacher. And three is going to be a doctor who is seven years qualified and is a pediatric consultant. You can look up the spelling for that if you want. All I want you to do once you've instantiated them is to print out using the built-in functions each of the information about each of the jobs on the screen. When you're done, share your code with it by publishing it on the community and use the hashtag replit 100 days of code to get that shared with everyone. Tomorrow, we'll be building a project where we build video games characters using OOP.